Welcome back. You're watching Cross Talks with Neetan Shan. We're talking about youth leadership uh, through various initiatives, and now we're going to focus a bit on the documentary productions, right? Um, so, obviously, arts and media arts is a very effective way to get message out and also build leadership, right? Uh, in the last few years, you've been involved in this uh, media uh, project or documentary productions, right? Take us through some of the roles you've taken. Navina, why don't you say what kind of roles you took and how does that help uh, you in leadership? So I've played a variety of roles throughout my years. Like act, I've been an actor, I've helped with the scripts, I've helped with editing, and I've also been the director. And I think being a part of all these different roles, they've come together and really shaped me to become a person. Like I know different um, roles and different fields to play with different people. And I think that helps a lot because I have more of an open mind and I can like use my different skills for different um, mm -hmm. roles. So the skills you learned, uh, have you thought about uh, or are you able to transfer that in your real life in school and other places from oh, this? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, for example, when I was the director for, of my group last year, I knew how to deal with different problems the right way, especially since my team is also um, a younger batch. I use different like methods of dealing with problems and I could transfer that into my real life with school, with family, because I knew how to handle situations mm -hmm. with like the best of my ability. So th I also understand that you picked social themes, uh, social issues or community empowerment themes and uh, community needs to focus on for the documentaries, right? Um, so that's, that's a noble thing to do because you're kind of getting a message. Uh, while you're becoming leaders, you're also trying to help the community to advance. So what some of the themes and how does that uh, fit into the leadership? Um, well, I think the idea of, lead to me, leadership, right, why someone would ever have to take leadership is to do some justice against some of the injustice that's happened in the world. Right, whether it's uh, seeing something in a bad way or whether it's doing something that is um, impoverished someone else's life. So in this year, for example, there's many topics such as um, poverty and living with disabilities. That's the team that I'm working with. I'm a mentor for a team. And one of the things we're trying to get out is that even though we call something a disability, everyone really has a condition. Mm -hmm. It's just a name that's given to it, mm -hmm. right? And we're trying to really clear that message that, and that people even though we consider the, them as disabled, they're as able as we are in some things as well, and they're more able than us in certain aspects as well. And I think it's really good that we're fighting these social aspects because I mean, we are coming to a time where we're trying to accept everyone, and the media doesn't focus on this stuff, right? So someone has to, and therefore it's our responsibility to take that role. No, that's, that's good. So uh, what was the thought process? Because uh, documentary production is not easy. Yes. Right, and mm -hmm. one of the you know as, as a TV station, we know one one show takes like many many people to kind of right. get through, right? So video productions, editing, and all the skills that's necessary, right. it's a complex thing. Yes. So, how did you decide to do this uh, project, and how how has the community supported with this? Right. So the the, the project is called Why Docs. Where this is we have been running for last, the last three years. So this year is, is going to be uh, it's it's Why Docs 2015. Uh, we have about 100, 100 uh, kids within the age group of 10 to 18 participating. Mm -hmm. The thought process is about we wanted to teach our kids project management, time management, and, and teamwork. Mm -hmm. And you can't teach that in a classroom to a 10 mm -hmm. to 18 year old. So we have to engage them in an activity. Mm -hmm. So we thought about that. You know, if if we challenge them with producing a movie, a short movie, mm -hmm. on specific social issues, that that way through that journey they are learning these skills. You know, they can they learn to develop a project. They learn to plan a project, they learn to lead a project, and they, the, the biggest uh, at the benefit of the program is they, like Namina said earlier, they learn to deal with uh, issues and how to resolve them as a leader. Mm -hmm. And that is going to help them for their entire life because there are, you know, everyone goes through issues every day, but if you don't look at them in a, in a constructive way, then you are going to run into problem. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the very good uh, benefit that is coming out of this program. So, so the end product is, yes, it is a short documentary on social issues, mm -hmm. but the important part is the journey they are taking to get to that end product. Mm -hmm. And how long are the documentaries approximately, like usually ranging? Yeah, the, the documentaries range from four to five minutes. Okay. And they have to, we, we give, the, over the last two years, they get to choose their own topic. This year, we gave them challenges, mm -hmm. about uh, 14 different topics. And they have to look at that, uh, look at the topic and, and take a concept of that topic and, and address it. Mm -hmm. For example, we are addressing uh, Tamil seniors in Canada, mm -hmm. uh, uh, child obesity, uh, 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 racism is one mm -hmm. of the issues, and, and uh, cyberbullying. So there, there are different diverse topics are given. 
and they have to, they, we are not expecting them to come up with a solution to it, yeah. but just address the problem. I mean, and the governments can't exactly. figure out what to do with some of those things. <laughs> exactly, right. So, right. Yeah. But at least, you know, while you're doing that, you're also creating awareness for yourself about those issues, right? Because some of, the, some of us are not completely exposed right. while you do the research and so on, right? Yeah. I want to ask you specifically about this, because media field has been dominated by men particularly in the Tamil media industry in many ways, right? So um, you have a good mix of uh, young women involved in the project and how does that help in future? I'm, I'm thinking that this is also going to help us kind of diversify our media field later right. in terms of gender yeah. equity. Um, we get different um, point of views when we include both genders equally. For example, we have a lot of women in this um, program mm -hmm. and we all have different ideas and when we are being inclusive mm -hmm. with the way we are approaching this, um, th these social issues, we get the different ideas and the different point of views. For example, we, t we talked about feminism and like gender equality. Mm -hmm. When we get the messages from both genders, we get the final product which is better than mm -hmm. having only one gender mm -hmm. speak on it. And you're going to be screening this at a, at a festival yeah. soon. Can you give us yes. a bit of details? Yeah. So just to add to what Navina said, uh, you asked about the, the female uh, representation. So in our, in our team for this Y Docs project this year, there is a 50%, 50-50 female and male population. But 70% of our leaders are females mm -hmm. this year. Yeah. So that shows that, like you said, yeah. that that issue is already being resolved. There is yeah. another, in another future, population. In future, a wave of, uh, wave of uh, mm -hmm. you know, very talented female population going to be, going to be you know, ruling the media world. <laughs> yeah. uh, Hope so. You know, we need, we need yes, change. Yes, we right? do need. Yeah, we need. We need change. Yeah. Change is good. Change is good. Yeah. Uh, the the documentary festival is going to happen on July twenty fourth uh, at the Metropolitan Center in Scarborough, and we are going to be screening uh, uh, the the winning movies. Uh, we we take the movies through a judging process, and we we give them awards. Mm -hmm. There's going to be eleven categories of awards that will be given. Uh, it's it's a big event. There's going to be over five hundred people going to be attending. Mm -hmm. And this time, uh, the Ontario government, the, the Ministry of uh, Children's Services, they are they are partially sponsoring our program. Oh, great. So that has you know made that turn to for the government to appreciate the program and and see the value of it too. That's, that's great. Yeah. So we're going to um, start talking a bit more about uh, about future, right? So the program is evolving, it's growing. Yes. Um, you know, one of the areas is that um, one of the challenges for us is. You know, our community has grown financially, mm -hmm. but there are also people who are still living in poverty. There are young people who do not have these opportunities, young people who do not actually be able to afford or parents cannot afford them to send to any paid programs and things like that, right? right. So how are we going to take this program further? Not that it's not already doing, but take it right. into uh, you know, circles of places where there needs to be more help or more, uh, more support. Maybe, you know, Young people with disabilities, yeah, you know, students who are marginalized, right? So, right. is there is there future planning to kind of expand yes. into those? Yeah, within the the youth leadership program, the, even in the existing program, we have about uh, uh, ten to fifteen students who are studying under scholarships. We okay. we don't actually say that openly because you know we want to make sure that these these children, you know, they don't yeah. feel that yeah, stigma yeah, of the right. So, right. So, yeah, so it's an unadvertised pro process. Yeah. If, if they come to us, or if we find out they are going through some challenges, we offer the program for free. Okay. Same for the YDOCS program as well. There's a number of students they are studying, they are going through the process for free. Yeah. So similarly, like you said, you know, we won't expand this to, you know, to a larger community. We are identifying, you know, the, their challenges and also, you know, provide the solution as much as possible within our capacity. You know, as we are, we are a non-profit organization, mostly self-funded. Yeah. Currently, we are we are applying for other funding and and, and things like that. Yeah. When they come through, we can expand the program to you know other uh, marginalized communities or ch people with a lot of challenges. Lot of challenges. Okay, yeah. great. So we're going to kind of move into the uh, last part soon. So I want to kind of get a sense of your personal journey through these programs. Right? How long have you been involved? Uh, I've been. I'm going to grade 12, and I started this uh, program when I was around grade 10. Okay. Right. So. And then, like I earlier said, that I think some people are born natural leaders. I think that I have some um, innate part of me that wants to like talk to people, right? Because people describe me as a very social person. But then I know that YLP, that my experience in it, has really helped me nurture my skills. Because as much as I could want to talk to people, I still would be scared. But I mean, um, through our classes, right, our, the speeches that we make up um, and we present to each other and the, the, uh, the comments I get, like one of the things I s they say is that I speak too fast. I'm not sure if I'm doing that right now. And, but then taking these comments into consideration has helped me become more approachable to people. And it has given me also many opportunities to speak at uh, different events. Like for example, um, 
there was a Heart and Stroke Founda um, Foundation walkathon in on September 4, 14, 2014, and I was the one who did the kickoff speech for that. Okay. So I think even by doing these things, right? So then there's all the already the um, experience, right, of talking to people. And then, like Kumar Uncle just said, it's not what you know, it's who you know, right? Mm -hmm. So all the people that I get to meet by these things, the fact that I got to meet you and I'm here today speaking, I think there's all those benefits that exist. Great. How about you, your journey through this leadership program? How has it helped you personally? So I've been a part of this for like three years now almost, and I think this has helped me a lot. At the beginning of this program, I, I was always like the leader of the classroom. I used to always be the first to you know, talk, and starting this program, it really opened my eyes to the different aspects of leadership and public speaking. I've improved myself in those areas, and I've also gotten to um, have really great experiences through YLP. Like Roshan said, I, did, I also did a speech for the kickoff um, event. I've done speeches in front of the gala and I've met amazing people through this program mm -hmm. and I think this program is really important and it's also benefited me a lot because of the opportunities that I've gotten and the skills that I've learned. Mm -hmm. So I, I usually say to folks that you know if I wasn't the Tamil Students Association president in my high school I would have not been an Ontario NDP president right. province-wide right? right because that's where it started. Yes. Do you feel that there are some people who might be dismissive that this is only happening in Tamil community or is it like, you know, because there's a right. bit of a tendency to think that, you know, yes. you always have to be in a multicultural setting to do, right? Which is important, but right. is there a bit of a dismissive attitude towards this in some uh, circles? It, it, I, I think the objective is for us to expand this to other community, but when we started this originally, we had a reach to Tamil community. We yeah. were able to reach and bring that, bring that population yeah. in. Uh, but the the program itself is open to you know any yes. community that that would like to. I mean, we have inquiries from other communities for them to open up as well because it's uh, everything's going through word of mouth. Word of mouth okay. uh, I think it's as as a Tamil person, uh, it is my duty to bring my community up and and you know empower the children of here. That doesn't mean I discriminate against the other community. Yeah, you're now. leveling the playing field. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah. right. Because that that we fi we identify the gap in our community because we have the reach. We we can identify the cap the, the capacity needs. So we are addressing that, uh, and we are very open to you know take our program to other communities as well. Okay. Before we close this segment, quickly about emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. right? Because it's a need, it's it's a concept that sometimes people aren't paying as much an, uh, right. attention in some mm -hmm. ways, right? Yeah. Because you know you could be intelligent in certain ways, but if you're not able to emotionally connect, communicate effectively, build relationships, right? Uh, you know, effectively work as a team, interpersonal skills, you're yes. not going to be successful, right? That's very How, true. What, what part of your programs are looking at emotional intelligence? Yeah. We, we allow people to, uh, uh, I can give a good example of from this group here. Navina was a, was a team member uh, initially, then she became a director last year. Now she's actually mentoring another set of team. So instead of she being a leader all the time, we are asking yeah. her to build another set of leaders. So we are, we are, so that you know she is preparing herself emotionally. Not only she wants, she has to be a leader all the time. At the same to time, go. to let that go and build another set of leadership. So these are these comes through practice, yeah. and and we are providing those opportunities for the yeah. children to you know to promote yeah. those abilities and build their emotional intelligence yeah. as you That's a good it. one because we have some leaders who are holding on to their position <laughs> for far too long, right? That's true, that's true. <laughs> so if yes. our younger generation grows thinking that the best yes. leader is the one who creates more leaders, uh, that's a good attitude to have. Thank you very much, uh, Navina and Roshan, for taking your time. Uh, the third segment, Kumar, you will still be here. Yes. But the two of you, thanks for taking your time. And thanks for the work that you're doing, mentoring others as well. Not that learn yourself, but also help others develop leadership skills. Uh, so we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to be talking about a particular aspect of this program that's going to focus on identity and Tamil heritage and, and, and history. And stay tuned after the commercial break. We'll be